For over 90 years, the Volcani Institute in Beit Dagan has been an unlimited resource for the agriculture industry in Israel, addressing specific needs to the Israeli farmers. Today, however, the Institute is funded mostly by research funds from around the world, and farmers in many countries around the world are now relying on Israel innovation to develop their agriculture sectors. Induces very severe symptoms. As you can see about these four Dr. Buttons. Moshe Lapidot has managed and to decipher the TYLCV virus, which shows up in tomatoes and, if not treated right, can mean a total loss for a whole harvest of the vegetable. In Volcani Center, there's about 20 to 30 uh, research programs around tomatoes. There's work about cucurbits, about pepper, about almost every important crop. In tomatoes, there's resistant programs, the one I'm involved in a program for high lycopene, a program for high sugar, which affects the taste. So far, people are happy. A program that uh, they take grape tomato and they dry on the vine, which companies are very interested in. You name it, there's a program running around. These plants are developed here at Vulcani Center, and these plants are resistant to TYLCV and will remain resistant even in the field. And as you can see, they show no symptoms. They are infected. You can put them in the field, we test them in the field. The revolutionary part is that recently we isolated the gene that is in charge of it. And now we can take this gene and move it from one plant to the other and shorten the breeding time and it will induce resistance. You see, this is the line, it's susceptible. This is how, what happens when it's transformed with the gene. The virus is called tomato yellow leaf curl virus, or in short, TYLCV. It's a virus that is transmitted by white flies, which are small insects. It's all over the world. Practically wherever they grow tomatoes, this virus shows up. And it infects tomato and induces very severe damages, up to full crop loss. You can have a field, get nothing out of it, or even lose 50%. For a farmer, this is bankruptcy. He cannot lose more than a few percent. He goes under immediately. Dr. Myron's department helped develop the Israeli dairy farm to the point that today Israeli cows are considered the best dairy cows in the world. This high level of milk production is attained by, by the combination of three elements. First element is the genetics development of the Israeli cow. There are about 60 years of genetic evolution of the Israeli cow by artificial insemination to get the best cow in the world. Because of our high achievements, we are supplying semen all over the world to every new herd that asks for it and is willing to pay for it. For example, in China, French, and some other countries. You can see example here for the nutrition of the cow. The cows here in our research farm are elder the group but fed as individuals. One specific cow can, can enter into one specific position. If the cow is going two steps over to the rear side, it will be closed again so that no other cow will be able to steal from this position. Contribution of Israel to the dairy, to world dairy industry is by the development of this unique system of nutrition and management that enable us, uh, despite of our very not good conditions, we are on the border of the desert, we don't have enough water, we don't have enough rain. Despite of this, we can use byproducts and we can produce the best cow in the world. The innovation of Amnon Lichter's unit is to help storage apples, potatoes and herbs for up to a year and thus give them a much longer shelf life. What we do here is to, to avoid or, or to generate fruits and vegetables which are free of chemicals and uh, uh, store them for as long as possible. So one example would be those apples, which we are, uh, this technology which we developed for apples. This, an untreated apple looks like after a few months of storage. This is what, the, using the technology that we uh, developed here, which is by controlled uh, respiration or controlled suffocation of the fruit in order to generate uh, natural compounds which will prevent this problem. This type of technology is now um, uh, known all over the world because of our uh, development. Uh, 
it's in stages of commercial adaptation. They have to change the whole industry to fit to this technology. We don't sell it to the farmers, we give it. We get our salaries from the government and we uh, uh, give you know, in return technologies uh, and dissemination of knowledge from other parts of the world. Uh, we, we are not experts in everything. We learn also from experts in other parts of the world. We bring the knowledge and we share it with the farmers. We don't sell it. China, which is known for manufacturing a lot of consumer goods, is now relying on Israeli innovation to develop their agriculture industry too. And who knows, maybe in a few years we will see Chinese fruits and vegetables in grocery stores around Europe grown with Israeli technology. For Jane One, I'm Ron Jacobson at the Vulcani Institute in Betagan.